Yay, I think we're live. I'm just going to check. And if you can't hear us for any reason, please do tell me. I can't see us, but hopefully we're on. So, one little check. Yes, Yay! we're on. Okay. So, welcome to Unwind Time, episode nine. I can't believe it's episode nine. So, my name's Hayley, and I've got the lovely Jo with hey us. Hey, everyone. So, before I introduce you to Jo, I'm just going to show you the wine that Jo is having today. I am having today. <laughs> it's nice. already started. <laughs> so, the wine is Black Cassis Cabernet Sauvignon, yeah. if I said that right, um, Langhorn Creek Blast. Very so, nice. Yeah? yeah? Like it? Yeah, Good. very nice. Good. So, Joe, for those who don't know you, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about who you are, what you do, and just so anyone can kind of get an idea of who you are in your business. Sure. Thanks, Hayley. No problem. Um, so, I am a small business coach, and um, I work alongside social media, uh, hence me being here in the offices of Your Social Voice today. Um, I have just spent the last four years or so traveling the world and then decided that um, time to settle down for a bit so I moved up to Perth. I've only been here three months wow. and loving it, loving the personal interaction I have with my clients and new clients as well rather than uh, meeting people and talking to people and helping them with their business over the internet on a Skype call. Yeah, yeah. And so what type of business is it? What kind of things and solutions are you helping people with? Um, I help them to do their branding, um, really heavy for network marketers in particular to not mention their company or their product name. So to step away from that sell, sell, sell that used to see on social media over the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, there's been a whole revol revolution over through 2016 and 17 where you can't now just post a link to your company website or your company uh, video and ask people to watch it. You've really got to build authority in your marketplace and position mm. yourself as, as a leader. Now, a leader doesn't necessarily mean you're a leader in terms of commissions and earnings in the company, but somebody that is resourceful and has knowledge and is able to provide solutions for um, problems, to solve problems for their customers. So wow. really heavy on coming from a place of servitude rather than just um, posting stuff all over the social media like like people used to. Mm, wow, so you're mainly into branding, helping people with that area of their business. Are there any other areas that you support as well? Yeah, I also help people with lead generating, uh, focusing on attraction marketing, also landing pages, web pages. Uh, wow, what else do I do? Email marketing, content marketing, like the whole... Uh, range of things that I've learned over the last four years which has been really fantastic mm. I've loved doing it um, so I'm really able to offer my clients um, very individualized service because not everybody needs um, a good website you know they may already have that not everybody needs um, to be on Pinterest for example so it's about the business owner their particular business yeah. and what what they need in particular to hit the goals and successes that they want for themselves. Wow, awesome. And I know you spent some time here at Your Social Voice yeah. and supporting us and doing some of the work as well. And that must have been really valuable. And then you do a lot of stuff yourself as well, which yes. is incredible. Yeah, yeah. I've known Kim for quite a few years now. So um, been fantastic to have that relationship over the last couple of years mm. and great to come into the office a few weeks ago and spend time with you guys um, you know Facebook marketing is one of those things where it keeps changing in fact I did a training video for one of my clients last week she watched it today and said it's totally different to what I did in the video for her so it's great that Kim and you guys here offer that expertise um, yeah. because you can't be an expert at everything so it's important to have resources that you can send people to for when they want to really get down for their um, Facebook marketing yeah. and so come over to the experts over here and then I can help them with the other things to do with their business. Awesome, thank you so much, really interesting, I'll have to ask you some more a little bit. <laughs> so um, what I wanted to talk about, the, the subject that I really wanted to talk about is oversharing and it was inspired by this article that I, re um, I read on the Collective Hub and um, on their Facebook, they, they post quite a few articles on there by um, different journalists, and I absolutely love them. 
Apologies if you can't hear us. They've decided to um, do some building. <laughs> but anyway, the, the, the title is called Are Oversharers Just Insecure People? And the Value of Personal Boundaries. But I read this article and I thought it really also applies to businesses as well. And for me, I looked at this and I thought about the value of business boundaries as well. So we're going to go through six main tips that I would speak about with regards to oversharing in your business and how you can maybe um, be more in alignment with um, what your business values are, for example. So the first tip, I've made a few notes here on what I got out of my highlight, highlights from the, um, from the article. So the first tip was adopt an air of mystery. So stay true to you and not post something to seek validation from others. So again, staying in alignment with yourself and not posting for the sake of it. Yeah. Does that sound relevant to you? Would you agree? Definitely agree with that one. Um, adopting an air of mystery can also come under the umbrella of attraction marketing. Yeah. So you don't, um, you know, when you're speaking to somebody or you're putting a post out to do with your product, offer or service, it's important to give them, you know, 10% of what it is that you're offering and create that air of mystery yeah. because then the customer comes to you, which is the, the, the exact attraction marketing model. Exactly. And I'm just going to just check that there's no comments and people can hear okay. <laughs> and it doesn't look like there are unless I'm missing something so thank you um, the, the second tip was think before you speak mm. so what am I gaining from sharing this information again does that sound correct to you so w when you're posting something you're always thinking about you know before you go and post something what am I gaining from sharing this information so um, is it relevant yeah. is it is it hitting the right people yes am I talking to the right people my yes. target audience do I know who those people are yeah yeah one of the things I talk a lot on with my clients is to um, before you're going to do anything in your business I mean this reflects into your personal life as well is just to take a few minutes and think about what the intent is mm. so if you're going to for instance do a call like this what is the intent what is the purpose if you're going to post on social media what is the purpose and the purpose should always be to help other people and solve other people's problems. So where you may think, oh, I'm going to post a link to, to a great um, product that I, I sell through my company, instead think about what problem you can solve for your audience and how are they going to perceive that. So it's really relevant yeah. to think before you post. Yeah, thank you. Thanks so much. Um, the third was... A third one was enough about me. Mm -hmm. uh, and what that means is really like quit talking about yourself and focus on the people around you. So using more yous rather than I, I, me, me. Yeah. Yeah. And we could, we're all guilty of doing that, right? Yes. Okay. So, um, and ask open ended questions. So if you are talking to your audience and you're having a, um, an intimate conversation with them on Facebook Live or if you're having, um, a chat you might have a Facebook group for example mm -hmm. so it's asking them open-ended questions yes. and then actively listening yes. to others whether that's through questions and that's right yeah when it comes to servicing your clients or your audience it's really important that you are forever asking them what it is that they actually need mm. so creating a poll inside of a Facebook group is a really good way to find out what they need a lot of people say to me, I don't know what content to post, you know, I'm stuck for ideas. And the simple answer is ask your audience, ask mm. them what they want to know. The other thing too is if you, um, you know, over social media in particular, you, you'll come across people and they'll say, I've done this, I've uh, helped so many people or I've coached and I've earned and I'm listed and I've got this many products. But in actual fact, what you should be saying is, I've helped so many people in so many countries, and the biggest, biggest one to not talk about you is instead to say, what can I do for you today? Mm, beautiful. So just come from the heart, just offer your services, and that way your customer is actually going to tell you what they need, rather than you trying to give them or sell them or educate them on something they're not even interested in so ask them what can I do for you today how can I help you and, and another thing I heard from um, an expert was that they 
go into Facebook groups. They have a look at the type of questions that their target audience are asking. Yeah. And then they're replying to those questions, giving them content, giving them yes. information, trying to help them. So they then respect the information and, and gain trust. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, if, if, for example, if you see a question in your Facebook group and you don't actually know the answer... If you take just a few minutes of your time and take the initiative to go and search for the answer on Google and then give that answer back to the person, that's exactly it. Mm. That's how you build your influence and authority in your own marketplace. Yeah. And a lot of people will say to me, but you're, I'm posting content that isn't mine. And that's okay because generally most people are actually quite lazy or they don't really know how to use Google um, in a broad sense. For example, you know, clients will ask me a question and I'll say to them, type that exact same thing into Google. How do I get such and such to work on Facebook, for example? And the answers come up for you. So even though you're providing content that was written by somebody else or it could be a competitor in your marketplace, People don't then, a very small number of people then go and jump over to that person. What they do is they recognize that you then offered the answer or the solution to their problem and then they come to you for more help. Mm, I like that. I like that a lot. Thank you. Um, another one was pause before you post and consider your audience. So it's kind of a little bit the same as some of the other ones. They're really interlinked, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but definitely pause yes. before you post because we can rush and get overexcited. Yes, yes. Okay. One of the difficult things with um, working in a social media space is often typed words can be taken totally out of context. Mm. So it is a great idea. Um, and if it's a very delicate situation, I myself have learnt to type it out and then just sit there and look at it for five or ten minutes and yeah. decide if it's the right thing to type and then before you hit post. The other thing too is obviously with the US election last year, or was it this year, last year, um, you know, people are very passionate about things that they're passionate about and that's yeah. okay, but in a public forum you've got to understand that it's okay to not agree with somebody else's point of view, but you don't want to be putting your very strong point of view over and over and over and over again because what we do in our public life in our private life, sorry, does reflect on our business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are some people that I'm following right now and they drop the F-bomb loads and loads of times and a whole lot worse. And, you know, they come back and say, oh, that's okay, you know, my, my customers are perfectly okay with that. And that's obviously true, but there's probably another couple of thousand people that aren't okay with that. So really important just to have a look at um, the photos that you're posting, have a look at the words that you're using, and while I get that you, not everybody is going to like everybody, and that's okay, but it still is a very public forum. So, you know, think about it this way. If you wouldn't say it to um, at a party to somebody that you've just met, then maybe don't put it on social media. Keep those conversations for face-to-face -face with your good friends, or in private Facebook groups where you do have your core clients and customers who are more than happy with your point of view or the way that you interact online. Mm, mm, awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, Liam said, sounds good except for the drill. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the other one was stop bitching. And oh, again, yeah. this is an article that is saying more for your personal social media. But I think this is also relevant to business. And the reason I say that, because here it said in the article, bitching can be a form of jealousy and eat into your own confidence and ego. And I think that really also applies to your business as well. You can get really shitty or like um, putting down other people when there's just not, there's no need for it really. No, yeah. no. I think there's more of a reflection on yourself than it is on them. It definitely is. Um... You know, I've, I've done, I've taken a, a, a journey into personal development mm. um, really strongly over the last year. And the, my personal opinion now is that when people post things that are, that are bitchy or condescending or in a negative um, 
connotation towards other people, then that's the essence of what's actually inside of them. So, you know, obviously people can be not having a very good um, um, family life or home life, you know, and we all go through ups and downs, and this could sometimes reflect the way we speak on social media, but it's just not cool to put anybody else down. It's not cool to judge other people. Um, you know, yeah. there's enough people in the world. How many billion, six billion are on Facebook in particular right now? There's enough people to go around. So really, if you've got anything, like, it, it, what's the saying? If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. At all. Yeah. And it is so true because it looks unprofessional. Your clients are going to say, well, um, you know, if they're talking, if, if you're talking about that person, then what are you saying behind my back? Because, like I said, that really shows the essence of the type of person that um, you are. And so really, really important to share that with your partner, your life partner, or share that with your bestie. But don't put it on social media, mm -hmm. especially if you're in business, because it, you're really going to lose a lot of clients that yeah. way. And you may think it's okay. I can be honest. I can share my opinion. You can, but there's yeah. there's a, there's a way to do it. So yeah. bagging out somebody else's business judgment, it is all one hundred percent ego based, and it's not good. And it's all going back to the points before where you're you're um, you're looking at that question. Um, what am I gaining from sharing this information? Um, talking for the respect of other people, mm -hmm. um, not posting for validation, and being in alignment with your message. Yeah. So, okay, yes, that can be definitely an opinion. I'm definitely not saying opinions, but this we're talking about bitching, putting other people down yeah. to try and gain more yes. for yourself, which yeah is more um, a reflection of your confidence and ego there. So the last but not least point for number six is put it in writing and what this means um, is what they said is about obviously this is very personal in a way that it, some people like to journal and it's a way to um, release their emotions or to go through any blockages or it's just a way to get all their thoughts out on paper and mm. that can be really therapeutic it can be for you and and that's a lovely thing if that's something that you resonate with to to do in your spare time but what I thought may be also a good way of doing this is if you're one to rant, if you're one that's got like those tendencies, and we all do sometimes, um, you know, keep a private journal, get all those feelings out and rant on paper. And then if you really feel that it's an mm. opinion or something that you think is valid for your target audience, then you take those nuggets of information and you put them through professionally and with your message across yeah. rather than just going Bleh. And like splitting everywhere, yes. all over the page. And all. Yes. So I don't know what your thoughts are around yeah. that. Yeah, if you're thinking of doing a video rant, for example, I would suggest just record a video, don't go live, and then maybe look at it a few hours later or ask someone else's opinion. But it's actually a really great way to give value and education to your audience. So um, your suggestion was great. So you, you want to do a rant, you write it down on paper, Take out a couple of key points, mm. and sure, you can you can state the key, the key points that you you've got um, the issue with or something that you want to talk about, but turn it into an education based post, and then so under the under the heading or under the topic, then go into why that's not a good idea or how it can harm somebody or how that reflects badly in your business, everything that we've talked about. So. Uh, you know, rant, your customers see it or your audience sees it, they're not very impressed with it. Instead, go, okay, this is what I saw, this is what why I'm concerned about this. Use different words instead of pissed off or upset or angry, concerned about, you know. Um, and so, yeah, it can, it can actually, they can be very useful. Uh, you just got to um, word it the right way, formul formulate it the right way. Mm, yeah. That, that's perfect. Thank you. And I think really the whole thing all comes down to um, alignment and what's true to you and mm -hmm. taking a pause sometimes because we can go out of alignment sometimes <laughs> um, and just kind of going back, why am I posting this? Is it 
right and relevant to my target audience are is it helping them is it for them or is it for me yeah you know so all these types of questions that these are asking so just being really conscious of why you're posting and what you're posting yes um and yeah i think that's that's everything unless you have anything to you'd like to wrap up or anything i haven't mentioned that you feel would also be relevant at all no, I think we've covered everything. There were some really great topics. Um, you know, quite often people are, they know they've got to run their business online in some aspect, whether it's through posting or through paid media or get their, um, you know, Facebook ad, their marketing campaigns managed by you guys here. Mm. But it's important to understand that there are a lot of people who are experts in this, like you guys. And so listen to other people's advice, take on board what they're saying. Because more often than not, we come to that conclusion because we've learnt by not by doing it the other way and finding out that it was detrimental. And so, um, when you when you find somebody who can give you advice, just listen and take the advice and understand that they've gone through a longer on a longer journey than you. And so sometimes it's best just to ask opinions, uh, reach out for help. Um, you know, I have what I call my circle of influence and Kim is definitely in, in my circle of influence. So people that I've built up and known in the last couple of years that I reach out to when I want to ask advice and for help, etc. Mm. So it's really important that you create your own circle of influence, especially if you, for example, if you're um, an entrepreneur and, and you, you're really a solopreneur and your partner doesn't understand what you're doing or your family doesn't even know what you're doing. So important to have another group of people that you can reach out to and get some help when you need it. Mm, I love that. That's great. Thank you so much. That's okay. Thank you for joining me. It was Thank lovely you to have you. Me. My pleasure. Um, and we haven't had Regan with us today. She's not very oh, well. Hey, so hey very Regan. Sad. Hi, Regan. She's Hope watching from better. home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better be Regan. <laughs> right, so that, that's us done. If you have um, any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us, whether it's on this topic or any of the other topics that we've spoken about already and if you have any ideas for the future topics then please do let us know so thank you very much thanks Hayley bye thanks everyone bye now I've got to learn how to turn it off <laughs>